All right, guys, as promised, a follow-up video for this Ruger American 22 long rifle. All right, guys, I just wanted to do a little review on this uh, Ruger American 22 long rifle. Now, I've had this thing, as I mentioned, for about seven months. Now, I've got about 1,200 rounds or so through it. Uh, so we have been uh, we have been having some fun with this guy. Um, but I just want to give a little review. Uh, there's some things I found that I really don't like about it. And there's a, a lot of stuff that uh, is, is actually really good uh, on this uh, rifle. So I thought it was worth doing a video. If somebody's out there uh, who's interested in uh, a 22 uh, rifle, especially maybe for a kid, um, you know, maybe this video uh, will help out a little bit in decision making. So First thing I'm going to say is what guns I kind of looked at, and I looked at all of them. I mean, I looked at a lot of them. So um, I looked at Ruger Precision Rifle, I looked at a Ruger 10-22, the CZs, the Savages, the Winchester, um, you know, just kind of, I'm kind of a nerd, made a spreadsheet, pros and cons based on, you know, how these guys look on paper. Um, and I'll tell you how I ended up with this by looking at, you know, just kind of looking on paper. So my first 22 uh, was a Woodstock Marlin Model 25. Still have it today. And there's just something about a Woodstock. Um, it's just kind of cool after over time, you can just kind of see how you've worn the thing out and, you know, all the memories that go into, you know, doing that, right? So, so I was kind of, it had to be a Woodstock. Uh, a couple other downsides, uh, a couple other things I considered. Um, would I love to have uh, started her out on a Ruger Precision Rifle? Absolutely, I would have. Those things are, are great, uh, very accurate. I have not heard anybody say a bad thing about them. Uh, the only thing is, uh, for a kid, those things weigh about 100 pounds. I mean, this is the ridiculous uh, weight-wise, uh, right? So she won't be able to carry that thing for like 10 years. Uh, so I'll have to do all that and I don't really want to do that. So, so that kind of, and the other thing is the tactical stock, you know, she's not a war fighter. She's a little kid. So we're not going to, you know, I just didn't want to start her off with something that, you know, kind of aggressive looking thing. Right. So not that there's anything wrong with it. Again, this is, this review is completely just my opinion, you know, uh, on these things. Uh, the second thing that was kind of at the top of the list was a Ruger 1022. Yeah, everybody has a Ruger 1022. It's like America's uh, top selling 10, you know, 22 long rifle. The only thing is it's semi-automatic and I didn't want to start her out with semi-automatic. Um, you know, she shot my AR uh, and you know, I've had her the range with semi-automatic pistol and stuff like that. Um, and I'll just, you know, honestly, a semi-automatic, in my mind, you can get into trouble with, right? It's just too easy to dump them things uh, and, and get into kind of trouble with it. And it's, you know, I, I wanted something where it's like every shot, you know, this is kind of like teach. This is a teaching tool, right? Every shot counts, you know, concentrate every shot, all those things. You have to work the action. You have to be smooth, be quiet sort of thing. You know, I just, I veered away from the 1022. Plus, you know, kids can sometimes be cowboys. So, um, you know, I wanted a bolt gun. Comparing the Savages uh, a lot, I, I looked at those a lot too. Plastic stocks, I don't care for those actions. They're they're really clunky too. Uh, it's just my opinion again. So it kind of left me uh, with this guy. So uh, this is what we end up with, obviously. Uh, fr so the stock on this thing, I'll start from kind of a, bottom up uh, kind of thing here so the stock has some like pressed in you know kind of faux uh, checkering which i'm fine with it's just kind of stamped in there some features it's nice um it's good looking it's a cheap piece of wood that's okay it's a starter gun uh, one, one thing i noticed was the way that this thing fit uh, and the feel of it the balance of it was is actually really good this is a very comfortable gun uh, first time i pulled this thing up and looked down the sights it was like you know, solid, um, you know, kind of cheek uh, rest, eye right down the sight, um, very comfortable. Uh, it's not heavy. It's not a bad gun uh, in terms of its weight. Um, it is a little longer than my Marlin, but not enough to, you know, kind of say so. But uh, it feels good. Very comfortable, very ergonomic. Uh, 
uh, rifle. So the sight on this guy, it does have a high vis sight on the front and that for the irons, obviously I have a scope on it, but um, iron sights are actually really good, really good. So it has a little diamond back here. You line that up with a high vis dot in the front and we shot a lot with just factory irons, right? And it's, it's very good again. Um, one thing I will say, uh, these iron sights like this, you kind of have to drift these around uh, to adjust or to sight the thing in. So, you know, you're going to have to have some tools and you can, you know, kind of bang around or, you know, kind of finesse around here to, to sight this thing in if you're going to go with the irons. I opted for the scope just because, you know, we wanted to shoot this thing a little bit farther than 50 yards. I mean, the dot is so big on a, on a target at 50 yards that... You know, you kind of, you know, we want to shoot this like 80, 90 yards and stuff. So we we'll put this little four power scope um, on this guy. And I'll just, just real quick talk about this. This is a Simmons uh, eight point scope. It's a four by 32. So four power. Uh, I think I got this thing for about 70, 75, 80 bucks, something like that. Not too bad. To be honest with you, the glass in this thing is awesome. It's really good. I'm I'm really surprised at, at how crystal clear uh, this thing is. Um, it's got like your run of the mill like duplex uh, crosshairs, you know, standard stuff. Uh, click adjustments. The the turrets on this are absolute trash. I'm sorry, they are uh, plastic knobs. Um, it does. I mean, I was able to sight this in, and it is holding zero very well. <laughs> but I mean. It's a 22 rifle, right? It's not like we're going to be dialing this in for windage and a stiff wind, you know, at 300 yards. You know, it's not going to be like that. But I mean, there's no the audible. There's no audible click. It's like a clunk, right? Right. It's really squishy, so you got to kind of be careful with that. But you know, for the price, really good, really good glass. I'm I'm just impressed. I had no uh, no idea it was going to be that good. Uh, trigger on this thing, you can see this guy has the uh, you know kind of the accu trigger. Uh, style it's got a little fin in it kids love that stuff um so the trigger on this guy is actually uh really good it's excellent trigger in this thing um it's about a five pound uh pull on this guy it, it's very low creep there's a little bit of creep in this thing but the brake is very crisp so the other thing i like about it is that the trigger is really fat i mean it's got a honking big fat trigger on this guy and it's great i love a big fat trigger to be honest with you um, that's one thing I noticed, uh, my Marlin has a skinny little trigger in it, but this guy's got a nice, you know, comfortable, you know, big wide trigger. So it's just more to feel. Uh, I like that part of it. Uh, safety, safety is really good. In my opinion, it's like a Mossberg 500 safety is right on the top and it's a pretty heavy switch, right? So you're, you're going to have to be deliberate to get this thing, uh, off the safety position, right? So, uh, no, no, uh, complaints with the safety on this guy at all, uh, especially for kids. It's right there. So it's good. Um, so the bolt, uh, action, uh, fit and finish. Let's talk about that. So if you watched the previous video, you saw that I had a firing pin issue. They sent they ended up sending me a new, you know, firing pin and working with Ruger was a great experience. I mean, they were very professional, uh, very helpful, wanted to make it right sort of thing. That was great. Um, but one thing, uh, you know, kind of like my original proposal to them was like, Hey, since I'm the one who's got to deal with this, just send me a new bolt, uh, and I'll just swap out the whole bolt assembly. And they said, no, they wouldn't do that because all these bolts are hand fit to the actions. Okay. Hand fit to the actions at the time. I was like, wow, it's sweet. It's good. It's quality stuff. Right. But after running this guy for seven months, nah, you know, it's like nice try um if this was hand lapped the guy took the day off all right this thing came off a mill you can see all those mill marks in this thing and it is the grittiest uh, grimiest uh, graveliest action i have ever felt or or worked with in my life and, and all these mill marks just grab trash grab dirt it's like really dirty stuff but what really kind of burns me is all these edges are super sharp burrs everywhere you know i mean this is this is just this is not good workmanship this is not good workmanship at all 
so I'm not impressed with this with the bolt uh, quality at all okay in this gun so I'm probably gonna have to and I'll end up you know getting the emery cloth out and uh, you know lapping this thing with some lapping compound or something to smooth that out but you can you can hear this thing it sounds like you're uh, sounds like you're you're zipping down a zip tie it's like what is that what is that why would how could this make it to somebody's house right from the factory you, you know that's just that's kind of unacceptable to me but anyways we've got it we can deal with it we have the technology so the next little uh thing i want to talk about was the mag right now i'm not a ruger guy uh, this is my first time you know kind of messing with one of these uh, rotary mags and and my opinion is uh, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of this uh, for a couple reasons. Um, yeah, it holds ten shots. Uh, like if I compare this to my Marlin, uh, my Marlin holds seven shots. But I would gladly trade in the three shots for just a straight up simple single stack center feed, you know, magazine. Um, getting this thing in, loading it's okay. I mean, it, it takes a little bit of practice. I mean, I'm I'm speaking you know from you know my daughter's perspective here like she can load this thing right but but she kind of has to monkey around with it it's pretty standard stuff but what really kind of drives her nuts is she can't get this thing in here i mean push and push and push and it just will not it will not go in there right so what you know you have to kind of like lead in with the front edge a little bit heavy and then snap in the back and it'll go in of course i can do this but it frustrates her because it's not intuitive right she can't do it all the time but that's that's okay we, again that's one thing we can kind of live with the next issue i kind of found with this and it, yeah this is a live round so if you want to go gun safety on me here in the comment section you know i get it but i, I don't care I, I can't think of another way to, i can't explain this as well as just showing it right now <clears throat> you saw this in the video where my daughter kind of double pumps you know this bolt to get the thing you know to load the shell and sometimes during the course of that you know the first pump she'll actually pick up the shell in the extractor and then when she goes back to double pump it to ram the thing home she'll actually blow it out the side she'll eject the shell and the reason why is because this thing jams every single time every single shell every single bullet that's ever went through this gun has jammed okay and this is how it jams like this see that just as it exits the mag it jams up on that lip and what it actually I, I can't i haven't figured out if it's the mag or if it's the way it enters the chamber right because the chamber is just like squared off it's just like flushed off uh it's kind of a sharp little edge in there so i don't know if that's the culprit yet or not but i need that's the next thing i'm going to kind of look at and then of course you ram the thing home right well that's really jammed now i gotta double pump it and what you get here, take this out. What you end up with here is you actually end up sawing off the bullet. Every single one looks like this. And it, it's, it's annoying, right? That little chunk of lead that gets knocked off. Well, that's got to go somewhere. And what we found is that just builds up in the mag and around that chamber. And it, it just... It gets worse over time so you know we have to basically blow all that crap out of there on a range and, and keep going until it kind of fills up again and it, it's just it's kind of bizarre but what i'm going to do here seems to be hanging up you can kind of see where it's got some it's got a little wear mark there i'm wondering if it's hitting on this mag uh on the way out so i'm going to do a little sanding on that and who knows maybe this is just a bad mag and I, all I have to do is throw this away. I would love to throw this away because this thing sucks. Um, and, and buy a new one and it'll work perfect. And then I'll love that one. But for right now, you know, I got to deal with these, uh, these little hangups this thing has. So I would say, uh, you know, just kind of wrap this up here. From a 10,000 foot, you know, kind of view, quality is good, not great. It does perform well, shoots well, right? Uh, and we have a ton of fun with this thing. My daughter loves this gun, okay? Um, but if I had it to do all over again, 
you know, the big question is, would I buy this, this rifle again? And the answer is no, I would not. I would buy the CZ. And the CZ has its downsides too. Number one is it's, it's really expensive and it's basically a trainer. Um, but the quality is, is so good on those things. Very smooth, very comfortable. You know, those, those guns are, you know, it's just better quality gun. And it's, it's a premium price on them things too. I, and, and I would, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. I'd pay it. I'd pay it, you know, to, uh, to have the quality because again, these, these kind of guns, right? These 22 long rifles, these things that probably spend some time in the gun case. Well, for the next 10 to 15 years, you know, my kid might spend a lot of time on this gun. Like I did. I still shoot mine all the time. So I got 30 years on mine. Um, that thing gets a lot of use because it's a plinker. So it's, it's better to go with the quality, go with the quality because you'll be happy in the long run. Um, and this one, you know, I, I, I'll deal with this, right? We'll fix this up. But, uh, you know, if I had to do all over again, to be honest with you, I'd buy the CZ. Um, I think this one is a, uh, for, for my application and what I'm trying to do, uh, you know, trainer, hunting, you know, plinker. This is, this, is a, this is a second place gun. I still think I would take this over everything else I looked at. Um, but the CZ is nicer. Anyways, that's my review. Leave it to uh, love it or leave it, hate it, whatever. Uh, like it. If you guys have any comments, uh, anything to add, uh, anything to correct me on, that's fine. Uh, leave me some comments. Um, I'm always looking to learn and I'm always interested in how other people, um, you know, other people's experience. So leave me some comments and uh, hey, thanks for watching.